before we create the doors, we're going to group our wall into another component, creating what is called a nested component. So we have a series of components nested within our other component. And I need to make sure that I have everything selected there. Now I have that corner selected as well. And again, we just go make a component. And I'm going to call this wall. And I want to make sure that I check replace selection with component and hit create. To create the doors, I'm going to swing around to this side. To create the doors, we'll start with a rectangle that's flush to the door side of the platform. So I'm going to start drawing my rectangle in the corner here. And I'm going to type 3.5 feet by 4 inches and hit enter and there I have the basis for my door. Using the push-pull tool I'm going to pull it up and set it to the height using inferences. Now to finish it off I am going to connect the midpoint with the column. And if I click, you can see it's an isolated piece. The next thing I need to add is indents that generally strengthen the door. Looking at the model, I measured from the top and from the sides so I know approximately where my indents need to go. To help me, I'm going to add some markers. So I know this is five and five eighths inches and from the left it's three inches and I know that the square indent itself is three feet by six and a half inches so three feet comma six point five inches enter. Then I'm just going to erase my guides and there I have my square. I'm going to orbit around and then copy this down the sides. You'll want to measure the exact distance in between but I'm just going to eyeball it to speed things up. Again I just use the move tool, click on my shape, and hold the option key down to copy. I'm going to do that several more times. There we go. Now I have the approximate location of all my indents. Now, to actually create the indents, we're going to use a tool known as Autofold. To do this, the first thing I need to do is offset my shapes. So I am going to offset it two inches. I'm going to go ahead and do that to the rest of my rectangles as well. All right now that I have all the shapes offset, I can use Autofold, which is actually a function of the Move tool to make indents. So I'm just going to select the middle piece, use the move tool, hold command or control down if you're using a PC. I'm going to zoom in a little bit farther here. And when I get those indents, I'm just going to bring it out a little bit more here can be a little tricky. And I have that set at 5 eighths inches now. I'm going to select the rest of my center pieces and do the same thing. And 
there we go. Now we have a door. I'm just going to make this into a component. And I'm going to call this component door. And again, I'll need to make sure that I replace what I have now with the component. I'm going to go ahead and hit create. To create the bars for the doors, all we need to do are extrude some polygons. Again, you will want to measure specifically where these are on the door, but to save time, I am going to eyeball it. I'm going to draw a six-sided polygon to act bars on the doors. All right. I'll place one there. And I'll set the radius at one inch. Now I just need to find my shape. <clears throat> and I'll pull it to the height of the post. Next, I'm just going to copy that shape or the 3D form that I already created. Again, I'm just using the Move tool and holding the Option key, creating that. I'm going to actually move these both over. Shift, triple click to select a whole object. And then I'm just going to move them a little bit closer to the door and a little bit over. Mm, maybe just a little bit closer still. Alright. Now all I have left is the crossbar piece. To create this one, I'm just going to orbit around so I'm facing the right direction and create another polygon. Now I'm going to make sure it snaps to the red axis. Oh, need to choose a polygon. It's on the red face. And I'm just going to go one inch, enter. Orbit around so I can get a little closer. And I'm going to pull it two feet. And then I just select the whole thing and move it into location. Hmm, that could maybe be a little bit longer. I'm going to shorten up the bottoms of these so they're only about halfway. And we're good to go. I'm going to group all these elements together, including the wall on the right side, and then I'll be copying it over in the next video. All right, I'm going to select everything and make it into a component, but I want to make sure I don't get the bottom plinth. So I'm going to go to a kind of extreme angle here, zoom out a little bit, then use my select tool and draw a box like that. And then hit the make component tool. I'm going to call it half. Again, I want to replace my selection with the component, though it's not as important this time and hit create. Now that I have a component here, I want to copy it before I mirror it. So I'm just going to use the move tool like normal, hold option down, and click. Now that I have an additional component made, I can use the scale tool to mirror it. SketchUp doesn't have a real mirror tool, but the scale tool works just as well. I'm going to orbit around so I can find the centermost handle, right there. And then click and start scaling. Now you can see that it's shrinking, but what I want it to scale to is a negative one. 
and hit enter. As you can see, they made a perfect mirror copy. Now all I need to do is use the move tool and bring it back to the proper place. Whoops, look like I, looks like I made my platform a little wider than it needs to be. I can just push pull that. Our shipping container is really starting to come together. Now all we need is some ribs for the back and a roof. We know that for the ribs, all we need to do is place the component that we've already created. I'm going to go ahead and draw a marker going one and a half inches back, 1.5 inches, enter. And now I have a spot to place my components or start my array from. I'm just going to go to the window, component, and get the panel on the right side. I'm going to choose rib two and place my component slightly away from the model because I need to rotate this one. which I will do now using the rotate tool. You want to make sure that the rotate tool is on the blue plane. Then you can just rotate it 90 degrees. So you type in 90 and hit enter. Then you just use the move tool and connect the points. I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer so I can really see that point. Now I know I need to make an array of this tool just like I did on the other wall. So I'm again going to use the move tool. I'm going to hold shift and option down, control for Windows users. And then type for X, enter. We'll see how I did here. Oh, I had one extra, but That should be okay. All right, now I have all three walls done to my shipping container. I can close on my components menu. All that's left to do is add the top. To put a roof on the shipping container, all you really need to do is draw another rectangle. Let's start at this point and draw over to this corner. Then I'm going to rotate around again. And use my push-pull tool to drop it down six inches instead of up six inches like normal. Now I have my sides that I can just push in one inch. Orbit around to the other side. And last, I'll do the front. And I'm going to make that flush with the doors. And there you have it.